One of the most beautiful things about a scope is that it can measure things for us. The digital ones do. The old green ones, you had to count ticks. If you look, there are little fine ticks here. And you have to count ticks to get voltage and time. And these ones are really nice. They'll save to a USB stick. They will take screenshots. There's all sorts of fun stuff on them. But the really nice one is if I press the cursor tool right here, it brings up a menu for the cursor. So I'm worried. I, so it gives me a cursor that can be in several different modes. Off, manual, track, and auto. So let's go to manual. Manual, I can either have horizontal or vertical bars. Right now it's vertical. Now it's horizontal. Okay. And when I grab this, it moves that up and down. So I can put this here and say, what's the amplitude? I can say, right ooh, there. And there's actually a second bar. I'm going to grab the second bar and bring it up. And you can see it highlighted this one. I did that by pressing this button. If I press it again, they both go together. And if I press it again, I'm back to just the top one moving. And I press it again, just the bottom one. And over here, it's going to give me my delta. B A Y minus B A X is going to be 11.6 volts. Okay. And that seems a little bit excessive. B Y B Y minus A Y. Okay. I think that's excessive. Yes, it was. Somebody had it on the times one times 10. So. Triggers off. And so because it's such a small waveform, it's actually having noise interference. So let's switch that back for really quick. Okay, so we're triggering nicely. But the whole point is that I could measure with this my 11.6 volts. This is obviously not an 11.6 volt signal, so you need to be paying attention to that. This is actually 1.176 volt signal that we have coming through this. The other thing that I can do, though, is I could measure my frequency. I can select my horizontal bars and put maybe one at the bottom point there. I just press, I press this once again. I'm pressing this button in and it's selecting my different cursors. There's half a waveform, there's a full waveform, and this says that my delta X is 2.53 milliseconds or 395 hertz. Turns out that it's actually 400 hertz, and so there's just a little bit of differentiation between what I did here. Let me bring that in just a little bit right there. Now it says 398.4 hertz, and I like that one a lot. So that's, that's what we've got going on with that. Uh, the big thing that you can do that's really nice is we can set to track. And what track does is it measures horizontal and vertical simultaneously. You notice that all the numbers are moving here as I move through this. And that's because it's tracking that waveform. I could set it, cho choose channel two and set my, once again, go back to cursor and sw set this channel to channel two. And now it's sitting here bouncing up and down because it doesn't know what to measure on this noisy signal. So that's the cursor tool. It's very, very useful in being able to measure frequency and time differences especially.